Hello and welcome to Art Snaps. I'm Katie and over the next 10 episodes I will talk about a selection of artwork from Swindon's collection. And in case you're not familiar with Swindon Museum and Art Gallery, we hold one of the most important collections of modern British art in the UK. But, um, if you're not familiar with us, um, you might be surprised to hear that this is a resource in Swindon, but it is true that a huge number of fascinating artworks from significant artists are housed with us and hopefully these art snaps will give you an idea of just how broad and exciting the collection is. Before we go on though just to give you a bit more information about myself and the reason why I'm doing this um, I work at Swindon Museum and Art Gallery as an engagement officer for a project called Art on Tour and this work is all about taking more of Swindon's art collection into more places and engaging with a number of people and communities throughout the town. Sadly, of course, Swindon Museum and Art Gallery has closed for the time being and much of this planned work is on hold due to the COVID-19 situation. But like many museums and art galleries, we have turned to the wonder of digital media to spread the word about what we're doing and hopefully provide some fresh insight into our collections and offer some learning and entertainment opportunities during this difficult time. After all, just because we're closed, it doesn't mean we can't continue to tell interesting stories about artworks in our collection and share new ideas. So if you're listening and these conversations spark any thoughts, please do share them with us on Twitter or Facebook or by commenting underneath the video. So this, our first art snap, is called A Celebration of Colour and I've chosen three particularly colourful pieces in the collection which I think are quite uplifting um, and I've named the episode after an exhibition which was due to go up in the next few weeks at Swindon Museum and Art Gallery which has been delayed until um, we're, we're able to reopen again. A Celebration of Colour will explore the variety of ways that artists represented in our collection use colour within their work and here I'm going to give you a little preview of what to expect by talking about three particularly striking paintings which will be part of the display. The main piece I want to talk to you about is Floristan by Gillian Ayres and the great thing about this work is that it's so uplifting in character and I think that's really what we need in our lives right now and I think that the reason for this is partly because of the energy with which it is painted and the great number of vibrant colours that the artist has used and I think if you if you go onto the Art UK website and search for Gillian Ayres, you can see that throughout her career, her work maintained this great sense of freedom and vibrancy. And even in her earliest paintings from the 1950s, where her use of colour has not quite blossomed, the work still shows evident of the bold pigments and gestures which she developed over the next 30 years. Now, the reason I'm telling you this is because I think Swindon Museum and Art Gallery is really quite lucky to have Floristan in the collection because it really represents a moment in her output where colour is at its most vibrant and the way she applies it is so bold and confident. Such freedom of expression can be seen in the way she's used such thick brushes with some brush strokes over a foot long and she's even used her fingers to drag the paint across the canvas in some cases. And we really get this incredible sense of the artist's physicality and energy within the work. And the result is kind of this great stew of fantastic shapes and colours, including yellow, pink, blue, red and orange, and it's all held together by a great um, bright green border. And I always find that the great temptation um, with abstract paintings like this is to try and pick out images within the paint. And I think it's human nature to try and equate abstract shapes with something that the eye can relate to. So I can see, for example, a sun with rays and perhaps a flower bed and maybe even a figure toward the centre of the scene. But it is unlikely that Ayres intended to represent anything too specific with this work. She wants to describe painting as being a similar process to a composer putting notes together um, and it kind of being about relating the marks um, to the size of the canvas and the way the marks and colours respond to one another. And I think the music analogy is particularly apt for Swindon's painting, which is named after a piece by Beethoven. And it's worth knowing that Ayres often named her paintings after she'd finished making them. So the titles don't really reflect the subject matter of the artwork, but she used she used a title that she felt resonated with the character of the artwork. 
Now, because I'm no expert in Beethoven, I decided to listen to the aria of Floristan during my research for this episode. And I can really understand why she felt that the drama, the emotion and great bursts of energy in the music were so well suited to the painting. The music's actually available through a few videos on YouTube if you fancy checking it out yourself. The next piece I want to talk about is Murray Fedden's The Spanish Chair, uh, which was painted in 1998 and is one of two pieces by Mary Fedden in Swindon's collection. The other is a much earlier piece from 1962. But The Spanish Chair is a great example of Fedden's later work and it's going to be included in the Celebration of Colour exhibition because it shows a totally different, perhaps more stripped back use of colour but no less vibrant. And this is partly thanks to the simplicity, I think, of the really pleasant composition that the artist presents us with. So she's represented a simple still life of pears, lemons and a fruit bowl on a round table. And to show these objects, she's used a limited colour palette of pink, yellow, blue, black and brown. And she's reduced the forms down to simple shapes and essential details. And I think it's really great how she's used areas of heavy black, which really enhances the presence of the table and chair and the still life. And she's used flattened forms to give us a sense of the objects being pushed into our space. So it's almost as if we are at the table ourselves or certainly invited to join and the vacant chair with the slice of fruit laying in front of it might even suggest the presence of another person. Overall, I think Fedden really succeeds in transporting us to a whole other place in this piece using very simple techniques of flattened, simplified forms and a limited yet vibrant colour palette. The final piece I want to discuss is Mark Lancaster's Cambridge July from 1969. Now I want to talk about Lancaster for a little bit because he's a really interesting figure. He's spent quite a lot of time in New York and travelled there for the first time in 1964 when he met Andy Warhol and actually worked as his assistant and helped him with a number of well-known paintings and appeared in several films. So this is quite an exciting time for Lancaster and also during this trip he met a number of influential painters um, who were also working in groundbreaking styles. At this time New York was really very much at the centre of the art world so he's being exposed to a lot of different artists and movements, not only pop art with Warhol but also uh, a number of minimalist artists whose work was characterised by its emphasis on materials in geometric shape um, and he was also familiar with a lot of abstract expressionists known for their large and bold paintings. So it's very much possible that all these fantastic visual experiences really feed into the painting in Swindon's collection, which was actually created when Lancaster was back in England and doing a residency at King's College in Cambridge. It's a very large scale painting, which is named after the place and time in which it was created. And in it, Lancaster explores the relationship of colours to one another and the emotional responses that they can provoke. So we're presented with a collection of colours in a grid-like formation against a cream background, um, which kind of gives viewers the opportunity to really study the nature of each individual colour, as well as the effects that they have when they're placed next to each other. And I think also the crop composition is kind of brilliant too, because it implies the infinite possibilities of this. It gives us the impression that the comparisons between colours and the and the the possibilities go on forever and ever. And I would say that it is it is hard to fully appreciate the impact of this particular painting on a computer screen. Indeed, all the paintings we've talked about today, but particularly this one, because at two metres wide, um, the colours, when you see it in the flesh, really pack such a punch. So I will end by saying that when Swindon Museum and Art Gallery is able to reopen its doors and a celebration of colour is able to begin, do come along and see this painting and the other two fantastic paintings that we've talked about today. Um, it's definitely worth coming to see them in the flesh. And that's all for today. I really 
do hope that this Focus on Colour has brought a bit of vibrancy to your day. And I hope that you join us for our next episode on abstract art in the 1960s. So in a way, kind of uh, starting from where we've left off today with Mark Lancaster. In the meantime, do keep up to date with our status by looking at our website or following us on Facebook and Twitter. Thank you very much for listening. Stay well and safe and bye for now.